Hi, I'm Ken, and I'm a frustrated educator and group leader trying to cope in this world of COVID-19 and social distancing. Today I want to talk about how to get a sponsor. And before I talk about that, I think it's important to discuss what is a sponsor in any fellowship. Most recovery groups function on a peer-led basis. This is called social model recovery. And with the social model, it's addicts helping other addicts, alcoholics helping other alcoholics, codependents helping other codependents, and so forth. The biggest goal with having a sponsor is accountability. Having somebody who you can answer to, somebody who you can check in with, somebody to be accountable for. When we try to work our own program and try to do recovery on willpower, we lack the element of accountability and fellowship with people who are like-minded, trying to strive for the same goals that we're trying for. That's why it's so important in early recovery to get a sponsor. So what exactly is a sponsor? A sponsor is a mentor, like a big brother, big sister. I like to think of a sponsor as a friend above you in a helicopter. You're lost in the woods and maybe you have a map on how to get out of the woods, but your sponsor is above you and has been through this before and can look down and guide you. So who wouldn't want to have a friend in a helicopter? That's what I think of when I think of a sponsor. So to clear the air, let's talk about some things that do not make up a sponsor. A sponsor is not somebody to control you. It is not somebody to rule your life. It is not your best friend. It is not your favorite uncle who's got 25 years clean and sober. It's not your dog. It needs to be somebody objective, somebody who can establish and maintain healthy boundaries with you and show you the way. It's not somebody that will ask you to come over and wash their car every Saturday. It's not somebody to have you come over and build a fence. Uh, a lot of people can abuse the role of being a sponsor, and that's not really the best kind of sponsor to have. Some people might need sponsors that are a little bit more strict and rigid than other people. Some people might need a sponsor that gives them a little bit of wiggle room and have them have some flexibility. So it's important to be paired up with the right sponsor. And if things aren't working out, you can always change sponsors and move on to somebody who will be maybe a little bit better suited, have a little bit better boundaries, and hopefully uh, have some accessibility for you. The primary goals of a sponsor are to help you with accountability, to help you acclimate to whatever fellowship or program you're in, and to walk you through the 12 steps whatever the 12 steps or whatever the recovery literature is for that program. Those are the three things, the most important things, accountability, acclimation, and the structure of helping you through the 12 steps. Anything beyond that can be very helpful, but that's not the primary role of a sponsor. I've had people call me and tell me, I relapsed because I was having a shaky moment and my sponsor wasn't there for me. I called him, I called her, and she didn't answer. She's not there, she's not available. So what was I supposed to do? I had to go out and use. Okay, that's not the role of a sponsor. If they're there for you and they pick up the phone, that's great. But they are people too. They're dealing with their own recovery and they have their own lives. So you gotta give them a break. The important thing is for you to reach out to them first, but also have an arsenal of phone numbers to go down the list so that when one person isn't available, you keep calling until you get somebody. It's not up to your sponsor to keep you clean and sober. That's not their role. Remember, their role is accountability, to help acclimate you to the program, and to help you work the steps. That's the role of a sponsor. I like the notion of a temporary sponsor. A temporary sponsor is somebody who helps acclimate you to the program without having the heavy commitment that you're going to be in it for the long haul. A lot of people dealing with trust, it's a little bit easier to digest this if you ask somebody to be a temporary. Now, a temporary sponsor will introduce you to people, get you acclimated to the literature, and might grow into a permanent sponsor. So I hear you. 
Okay, Ken, that sounds great. Sign me up. Well, it doesn't work that way. You have to go out and you have to find a sponsor. Now, there's different ways to do it. The first way is you have to get yourself to a meeting. You have to be in the meeting and have consistency in the meeting to be able to hear what's being said at the meeting. You need to be able to hear what somebody is saying and get to a point where you feel comfortable with somebody and say, you know what, I can relate to that person. That person has what I want. That person has the kind of recovery that I would like to have someday. Those are the ways that we look and seek our sponsors out. The next thing we need to do is make contact. Whether we go up to them and shake their hands after the meeting and say, hey, I really like what you had to say, I can relate to you. Uh, or maybe it's as simple as, you know, I really like what you had to say and um, I'm wondering, do you sponsor people? There are some meetings where they even ask who's available to sponsor and people will raise their hands. If you're in one of those meetings, you need to look around and see if any of the people that you can identify with have their hands up. Simple as that. Well, it's May 2020 and COVID-19 is going around and you say it's not that easy because I'm not in a meeting. Well, even in a virtual meeting, you can still get some consistency. You can still listen to see and hear who has the recovery, who has what you want, who shows up consistently. You can always pull these people in a private chat and start a conversation or ask for their phone number. Maybe they're already on the phone list, and if that's the case, send them an introductory text or call them up and just introduce yourself. It's difficult. It doesn't happen easily, but you got to take that first step. And I realized that trust is an issue. A lot of us don't want to trust anybody with our life, don't want to trust anybody with our personal business. We don't trust, and that's understandable. With a sponsor, you start to build the trust slowly. It doesn't happen overnight. It's about pacing. So don't worry that if you find a sponsor that immediately you're going to be having to call them 10 times a day and bear your soul to them. It doesn't work that way. And if you have a sponsor like that, probably not a good sponsor to have. One tool that I've given to people that has worked in the past is to go around and ask several people and I say several, I mean 15 to 30 people in a week or two, at meetings, these simple four questions. First of all, introduce yourself. And then question one, how much clean time do you have? Simple, straightforward question. Second question, what was the hardest part for you when you first entered recovery? Question three, what do you look for in a sponsor? And question four, what suggestions would you have for somebody new to recovery like me? Four easy questions. If you ask 15 people these questions, by the end of the week, 15 people will know your name and you will know 15 people. And from that, you start to establish a sense of fellowship and have a better idea who to ask for a sponsor. So now that we understand what a sponsor is, the role of a sponsor, and how to get a sponsor, go out. Start interviewing people, start listening, and find yourself a sponsor.